Welcome back to iFish News, our fishing podcast, together with myself, Glenn, with City of Allen Fishing Field Team, COAF Field Team, a fishing podcast where hopefully you can learn by our trials and errors. In this episode, what we're talking about is jug lining our local lake, lo- local lake being Lake Levon, just right down the road from us. Um, this round, was able to take the John boat out, uh, did have to watch the wind and whatnot, uh, you know, did pick up on us. It was kind of chilly too, and then the uh, wind picked up. And what we're just going to go and uh, recap this round is that trip, uh, and some some things to take away from that as well. So we'll start out. It was uh, Friday, January twenty fourth. We're at, correction, April twenty fourth. We were able to get out there, take out the John boat, and do some jug lining. In this case, the John boat. We just use oars. Left the motor at home. We were able to put out six jug lines, and we were using some freshly caught shad right at the boat ramp. And what was nice about that is it only took about three, four casts, and we had enough shad for the rest of the uh, morning when we uh, fished. Uh, also, we brought with us our new fish finder. It's our Charlie the Maltese Doggy. <laughs> uh, he definitely likes to go out on the boat and uh, get an opportunity to catch a fish or two. So we did this round, ended up catching... Seven fish, six blue catfish, one channel catfish on shad. Uh, some things that we learned this round. Well, one, uh, the catfish are hitting in the shallows. We were fishing about three, four feet, and we were able to get them there. Initially, we were out uh, fishing a little bit deeper, maybe about eight foot of water, ten foot of water, and we are also getting them there as well. Uh, also caught a couple of game fish that we had to throw back. One was a crappie, another one was a white bass, and Texas law or uh, fishing regulations, we had to let them go. Uh, can only catch catfish as well as non-game fish when you're using jug lines. But anyhow, uh, other things that we took away from this trip, uh, when we're heading out there and the temperatures were kind of chilly, but did warm up on us, just got to watch the wind. Uh, key thing with the wind kicking up, and especially in uh, the area that we fish, is it's one thing when you're going out, to uh, the location where you're going to fish, which is just basically a, a, about maybe two, 300 yards down from the boat ramp around the point. Uh, it's no big deal because the wind was was uh, in our favor. But coming back, well, that was kind of brutal. Yours truly have a kick into the uh, rowing muscles and get those oars going to get us back to the boat ramp. So do plan your trip to uh, watch the wind. We kind of expected that because we're used to that, uh, that time of year or this time of year when it does that. And... Made that adjustment and just uh, added more time to uh, the time to get back to the boat ramp. And so we kind of expected it. We didn't like it, but hey, that's how it goes. And that said, did have another front come through. Temperatures dropping to about the mid-50s this Saturday. It's Saturday today and this morning. And, well, we held off on going out because the wind's supposed to kick up. Uh, a little bit more, I think about the 15 mile per hour, 20 mile per hour range. So uh, we're going to wait till a little bit later in the day or possibly in the morning when we hear that the wind will die down a little bit more. And that will make it easier for getting those jug lines out there. Other things that uh, we also did this round, we did a kitchen cook. Uh, we'll get that video. Uh, actually, this, this video um, or this trip's video, we'll get that out there. And at the end of it, just a quick description of how we cooked that uh uh, catfish and so it was a, uh, a I'd say maybe two of them we kept for this beer batter fish fry recipe that we uh, like and then the rest we filleted and did a flash freezing of them so that was pretty nice because when you flash freeze them you're able to keep them uh, less room in the in the freezer uh, and and um, uh, last I, I guess just as long as when we put them in blocks of ice so Oh, I think we're going to do that going forward because uh, we definitely had a good amount uh, that we caught for this short trip. Uh, we're only there from, oh, about 8 o'clock to about 10, 10.30 and ended up getting those seven catfish. Ended up losing about two or three other ones. I think they kind of twisted on the, the line and were able to break free. Uh, additionally, we were able to catch up to the uh, jug line in time uh, just we were on the other end where we had set up uh, two sets of jug line um, out there. Okay, uh, so some lessons learned. One, watch the wind, be prepared, uh, and adjust your trip appropriately. Uh, when you put your jug lines out, 
be prepared to also to fish them shallow as well as a little bit deeper and then adjusting as need be. In this case, when we noticed uh, a lot more were gonna, getting hit a little bit further out, we kind of moved the ones that were shallow closer to them and adjusted for that pattern. Uh, let's see, do keep in mind to uh, know your fishing regulations. Uh, we knew from past experience, but you can't keep any game fish from jug lining, so uh, we were good there. And then uh, last but least, uh, but not least, is do try that flash freezing technique. Uh, it does look like a, a really nice fillet once it's frozen, um, but uh, really, really comes out just as fresh, uh, even if you cook it later than when you first caught it. All right, so all for now. Till next time, we'll catch you all later, and good luck and good fishing.